Good evening YouTube, Needlebender785 Ohio with another tube amplifier fun video. Here we have um, a new brand new bias board that I just uh, uh, actually I just developed myself over the last couple of weeks and had it uh, professionally printed over one of the uh, one of the places that makes circuit boards boards to any design such as such as this right here it's a totally different design but I use JLC PCB and uh, this and a custom made heatsink for this particular board so these boards are actually designed to work for any kind of bias voltage for any tube amplifier anything from a 3CX3000 to a um, uh, 3500Zs, multiples of 3500Zs, anything up to about, I would say, 6 amps of current. And um, <clears throat> now, there's a slightly different variant for the GS35B, which is still the same board. There is an optional resistor that's installed in there. And uh, that's because the GS35B runs uh, between 27 and 45 volts of the bias volt. So it's a little bit higher bias to voltage uh, to get the tube in the cutoff and not to run itself away so you kind of actually when I'm talking when we're talking about higher bias voltage we're actually talking about um, the separation of voltage measured between the um, the grid and the, the um, cathode so we're actually raising the cathode voltage above the um, the case ground or grid which is the grounded grid amplifier and that actually brings the tube more into a into the cutoff region instead of being wide open for example 3CX3000 in the class AB2 mode of operation can be uh, zero volts which is the way I've been running my 3CX3000 now you could run it uh, about 12 or 10 volts or so and have about 250 mils of current and that's very very good for AM and competition and stuff like that however if you're running it for sideband such as like I do I run zero volt and a lot of ham guys do the same thing so today we're going to take a look at the circuit and this comes uh, from from one of the ham um, ham guys on the internet that just comes up with a lot of awesome stuff and um, um, this particular individual came up with this bias control circuit and uh, this circuit I guess been around for many years and it's just been improved over the every year somebody adds something or makes it more so this one's been modified specifically for the GS 35B design and I've basically built from this circuit I've omitted a few parts that are not um, required such as this optional 50 watt resistor which we have here but we actually have it here for a different purpose but um, you could either go with the 50 watt resistor and a smaller heat sink or you could go with a larger heat sink and bypass the resistor so even though we have this resistor here this is connected um, so this is our minus. This is right now for our testing purposes. This is connected to our negative and this is connected to that 50 ohm resistor and that's going into the 70 volt, 75 volt power supply, which it's actually what I use for my high power LD MOS testing, but I don't have a, that's the only high voltage, medium voltage power supply I have to do this kind of testing because this power supply only goes up to like 32 volts, which is not sufficient for this. What we're going to take a look at is how stable this device is under various um, loads, various temperatures, and stuff like that. So right now the power supply is off. We're resting at zero volts, pretty much zero volts. And we have a current meter here, which we're going to be using also. Be taking a look at the current. Right now we have, I'm going to zero that out because we have no power applied. And we're going to take a look. So right now we're turning on this power. We have 72 volts, 73 volts. Uh, so right now we're set on the lowest voltage, 27.2. And just remember that number, 
0.2 volts and we're drawing 0.89, almost 0.9 amps. So right now we have this um, control knob. And I'm going to try to use one hand to turn it. And we're going to turn this up all the way to 45 volts. And um, so as you can see, we're cr cranking this up all the way to 45 volts, which is the top end of the bias for the GS35B. There you go. This, this, is, uh, this knob is not what you really want to have here. You need a 10K knob, 10K potentiometer. I simply didn't have one, so I've used a 50K, and I just got to be really careful not to go over that voltage. Um, so the 27 volts, 27.2, remember that number, 27.19. So what we're going to do is right now we're resting at 72 volts. I'm going to take this down to 50 volts. 50 volts. Number 27.19, 27.18. So we had a almost no change in voltage. I take it down to uh, 50. So pretty much still the same voltage. We're at 44 volts. Now we're going to go all the way back up to 72 still the same voltage so we're varying current we're varying supply by varying supply voltage this is pretty hot but this is like I said this is only a test piece of equipment and we're stable at 27.18 volts the heat sink is pretty warm for heavy current applications there this will come with a fan and um, I mean you are dissipating if you really think about it you're dissipating um, so right now we are dissipating 27 volts at almost an amp so you dissip where we gotta think right now we're dissipating 25 watts of power 25 watts is a significant amount of power now in some applications this will dissipate four times as much in which case you will need a fan on this which will run on 12 volts so like I said um, that's why we do have a a large heat sink and this thing is working fantastic here's we're going to crank this up to 30 volts just leave it there and then right at 30 volts we're going to take it down to take it down to same thing here we go so right now we're at 49 volts we were at 70 and we're at 30.02 we're going to crank it back up to 72 volts and we're still at 30.03 well, anyway so this just to show you how stable this piece of equipment is and this is what's going to go into my uh, actually all of my future tube builds are going to have this um, I got a whole bunch of them. I'm actually going to start selling them on, uh, I don't know if I'll do on eBay or I'll do special order. But I'll be selling these as completed kits. Where all you got to do is um, attach a potentiometer and connect it to your board. Maybe have a fan. Uh, probably for as far as pricing goes, it'll be uh, 50 bucks for the assembled board with the potentiometer and uh 20 bucks for the heat sink 20 25 bucks for the heat sink plus shipping so um we'll have these available for anybody that wants to have a bias board and will um drop me a line <clears throat> or um send me an email or something like that um anyway that's the circuit uh, a lot of people say well then you can make this for like two bucks well here's the circuit i Never asked anybody not to make anything. Like I said, all the parts are in here, values. I got these on JLCPCB, and uh, the circuit's right there. Feel free to make it if you want. But like I said, for those that want to buy a completed product, tested, um, 
this that's going to be the price going forward anyway um thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video what's um going to be um the tuning the upper portion of the deck the output portion where we're gonna um let's see what kind of capacitors we're going to use on the output i'm thinking it's going to be one of these um and uh, pick a coil and see if we can uh we also got the vacuum relay in, in stock now so there's a lot of a lot of moving parts starting to come together also this whole bottom deck in the next video will be assembled and we're going to be testing it so i haven't decided whether it's going to be um, the bottom deck testing or the capacitor tuning in the next video but anyway stay tuned you'll find out here in the next couple of days Needle Bender 785 Ohio. I'm back on the side.